Well, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. It's actually had legal time to go warmering as well for the abalone, but I've got to get on with this. And uh, backs being backs, you know how it is. So as you can see here, this is the back, the back uh, cuddy, which I haven't done. I've put a new latch on. I've bought some new latches, stainless ones, and I've also done this round the back, so it reinforces it a bit, makes it stronger. Also helps against anybody trying to kick kick it in or anything like that. And then we've got this one over here. It's a bit darker here, but same thing. New um, lock on it. And yeah, I haven't finished this one yet. The same, it's got the same thing on the back where it's got like a splash, it stops the water getting through it if need be. There we go, it's going to go in like that. I've just banged the screw in for the moment, I'll put it in properly once it's all wired. These holes I've got to sort out from the screws. So I've just been mixing up um, some paint. Paint, not paint. Gel coat. So you see here, this is the stuff that's been mixed. The trouble is, is it's very runny, and I'm not sure how this is going to set or not. I've got some stiffer gel coat but I don't think it'll mix so well. But you can see it's it's not bad. This is obviously needs to be brought up. It's a bit white this it'll be darker than that. Um just testing it really. Just want to see if this stuff will set because it had to have quite a bit of pigment put in it which has made it runny. So put some in and leave it and see. And I can mix some more up here. Me too. What's been happening around here? Well, 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 we're working on things. So the gel coat's not going well. It doesn't want to set because obviously with that liquid stuff, it's making it too thin and it's not wanting to set. But uh, I'll figure it out. Don't worry. So yeah, you can see it's all going on here. Got the electric thing under there. We've got the box lock thing in position. I'll show you that in a sec, actually. Uh, just doing some wiring. And you can hear the noise at the back. This is a hairdryer. Turn it off for a minute. So, just blowing air through, really. Through the keel. Through the hole where the uh, stopper kind of thing goes. And there's some stoppers in the boat, obviously. So the hot air is going through the boat, through the keel, and drying it all out. Because we're going to pour resin into that keel. Not a lot. We're just going to put up about two centimetres where the keel band comes in, along that edge, to... It's going to run around the screws which obviously poke through and that will lock it into place but it's been drying for a couple of weeks now and obviously there'll still be dampness in this so i'm just drying off running the hair hair dryer air through it so sort of custom built just to um dry it off obviously not putting it too hot because you don't want to blow up the hair dryer just airs enough really especially on a day like this so that is the plan And then tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, we'll do the pouring of the resin. You need about, worked it out at about four litres, I think we'll do it. It should be enough to run along where the keel is, seal up any sort of holes or dents or any cracks like where we repaired from the outside. Hopefully the resin will find its way through on the inside. First thing I've got to do there is where that hose is, I'm going to um, put a hoover on it. And we're going to run the hose up through and suck out along the keel, just in case there's any sander and it should be at the back so we tipped the boat on and I flushed gallons and gallons of water through the boat quite a long time back till literally I mean the water was coming out clean so it's just probably a little bit of sand that might be there so we'll try and suck all those up as well and yeah we're just going to put it in as a secondary kind of thing everything's done on the outside but I just want to be sure on the inside plus it'll give something solid for the keel band to be attached on the inside
kind of the idea. Obviously they'll go back further with the seed. It's going to notch them around that bar at the back. Um, yeah, so the pump then will be in like this. Once I've fitted it. Obviously there'll be a hole that comes out, but I mean this can go wherever it likes. Just twist around. So it'll be like that. And then there'll be a float switch up ahead of it, a small one. So there you go, it's gonna look something like that. And it's gonna go like that now. This obviously not with this, but uh, a thinner bit. Now you think, oh well, yeah, but it sticks out from the seat. It does, but if I make it any closer, when this pumps on, um, the bit you twist here is gonna get in the way, so I need to keep it back a little bit, because this can go, um, where's this going, back here, somewhere, so it should just about fit. You can always tilt it back a little bit, just out of the way, but um, yeah, it's gonna be something like that. Right, well there's the basis for the for the sounder box and for the fish finder basically gonna be like so 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 and so like that pretty much doing this to a hoover and then it's going to go in the holes of the keel I'm going to hoover up any excess sand the boat's been drying for about two weeks and I've had hair dryer in it a couple of days blowing air through the boat just like a fan kind of thing to dry it completely out now it's completely dry and what we're going to do later is going to hoover it up now any bits of sand and that's got in the bottom and then we're going to run a thin layer or a centimeter or two down the very center part of the keel where hopefully it'll find any old holes or anything that hasn't been sealed, go in any of the little cracked bits where it was, where the uh, where we fixed the damage on the outside, and bed around the screws which stick through because the screws obviously stick through the fiberglass there, which isn't the greatest design, and it will lock onto all the screws and thereby making a nice little solid run or bonded to the fiberglass. We hope, and like I say, sealing up anything. For the future and get this done now because obviously drying out a keel and all the rest of it isn't the easiest things to do and uh, while it's out of the water and we're doing all these repairs we just well get that sorted now and then the screws have something to lock onto in on the inside because it literally goes through just fiberglass there's no sort of wooden keel or anything that the screws go into in these boats it's just literally into a void so uh, we need to address that now for my own uh, personal peace of mind of having it done properly so uh, we can start here actually so I've attached a hose like this to the, the hose will be pushed in there's three points one at the front one in the middle one at the back we pushed in both ways sucking up like I say any bits of paint sand anything that's gone in that hole I, there's not a lot in there I flushed it out with a lot of fresh water 
until there was no more dirt, but obviously sand and that little grains of it get stuck and it's, it'll mostly be at the back. So it comes up over the back part of the keel to escape the hole. So we'll start off on the higher parts first. So we've just literally poured resin, which we mixed up in this bucket here, into, down in the keel, we've taken out the bungs, we've got one at the front, one here, one at the back, so what we did is we tipped the boat back, we poured it in here, we poured it in the front one, let it run through till it poured out the back one, which is down here, there, then we tipped the boat forward, so now the resin has dropped sort of to here, so you've got about an inch of resin in this back part, not so much in the front part, which has run all the way along the keel. So we're just waiting for it to set now. You see it spilled a little bit over there, and you can see it in there. So it just fills up a little part of the keel all the way along. It'll bond around all the screws that poke through into the void, and hopefully that'll seal any kind of screw holes. It'll, like I say, be around all the screws, so it'll lock those screws in on which are holding the keel band and hopefully make a better keel because before the keel is hollow and thin and not fantastic. And so right, we've just finished fitting the bar. As you can see, this is the bar, goes up, goes down. Um, we're still working on this part here. But I've got to drill holes into here. We're going to have four different points now. So when this goes up, it'll go like that. And then this bar moves to whichever point, locks in and gives it the brace that it needs and then when we're finished we haven't sorted this bit out yet but what we'll do is we'll um do it we'll spin it around like that and i'll have some kind of lock on that as well just to brace it when we're moving or motoring that kind of thing because the thing is this is loose on here it's not this joint the joint is solid but it's where it fits onto the bracket for it but anyway that's what the plan was and then down it goes down like that and there you have your brace and as you can see the weather has gone horrible again it's been blowing gale for the last day or so but fortunately we got what we needed doing the other day which was the resin inside the keel area obviously we didn't fill the keel we've only done it uh, two centimeters depth i suppose right as you can see the, we've got a box and it's not finished yet it's um still working progress and down here I'm still working on this now what I've done with this is I've the plumber was around the other day and he's kindly given me a fitting for this for the pump now I had a plastic one on here but the plastic one had quite a long bend to it or about that much more and I need to leave enough space there for a float switch to fit into there for this pump this will screw down around here again this one I want it fairly close that way because there'll be a wood piece to the seat there covering it and then the front here will have a stainless plate made up with holes like a grill to let the water run in the water can still get in around the edges a bit but I'm trying to avoid um, seaweed and winkles and things finding their way in so I'm going to make a grill thing there so it can let the water in but doesn't let all the, the rubbish in which might block the pump so that'll be our that'll be mainly for our um, when we're not on the boat, mostly for the float switch and that, so it pumps water out if it gets too much water on it, and we can't get to it. You can see that uh, I'm still working on the front. I haven't done the electrics just yet. That'll be this week. But you can see that we've got the battery box in there, and where it's screwed in, I put this block in. But you can simply do that, pull that, and out comes the battery box, like so. You put it back in. Just in case we need to remove it any time, pin goes back in like that and locks the whole thing in position. I'll probably still put a strap over, more to stop the, the lid from rattling or anything like that, or banging off. And I'll put, um, going to put some rubber matting, probably maybe under it and inside it for sure when the battery sits on it, so it takes any sort of light shocks. Of course, we've got the post in there. This is where the electrics will go for the for this. I've still got to wire it up, but I've got to do all the battery wiring at a later date. And the sockets are obviously in. 
I'm going to put the kill switch, the new one, on the inside so it won't be like that on the outside. It'll be from inside. So you have to open the cutty to do the kill switch on that one. This one I'll just leave it as it is. I'm going to leave that switchboard there. I might put... I might. What I'm thinking of doing is putting the this through the kill switch at the front there. And this we've put on and we made it such that we can see the holes at the top. This is where the bars drop in. Again, I'm just going to finish this off. Um, we put the screws in like this. There was supposed to be another one here, but I would fell short because we had a nightmare getting this this hardwood up under there through, with the curve and the height of it. We end up having to make things like this to be able to hold it up, knock it up tight to the top. But it does go all the way up now. I've just got to fill that little hole there. That was a pilot hole I put in to see if the wood had reached, and it, it did. Unfortunately, like I say, it went up to here. And then, of course, it was pretty well jammed at this point, so the wood is kind of back here and here. So we didn't put the final screw in there, left it as it is. But the whole point of that is strength, and that is... Well, you can see that is super strong now. So that'll have the brace bar in for the winch. You'll see it all when it's when it's done. Obviously, I'll show it all then. And when the sound is finished, the box sounder box, it's going to look something like that. And this is kind of what I see from where I stand from the engine. Well, more sort of here, but I can see that perfectly well. And knowing from the old box, from the old boat, I'll actually be standing a little bit further back than the old one. And the old one it was just catching the top, but with this one we should be fine. But like I said, that's got to be finished off yet. It's all got to be painted and screwed down or bolted down. So this is my fish box. One of them needs a good clean. That's for sure. Sitting outside most of the week. But anyway, um, it broke. <laughs> right there. Plastic. These fittings always seem to end up breaking. There you go. New handle. That'll do.